Yeah, first of all, like when I know when depression hits me, like I totally stop taking care of myself. Like simple tasks, like things that you usually do without even thinking, uh, like, you know, waking up in the morning, I don't know, brushing your teeth, I don't know, washing your face. It's like it becomes close to impossible, like working out, no, like cooking, I don't want to cook. By the age of 25, I started to get the thing called psychosomatics, which is like all the negative emotions that I suppress started to have the physical symptoms of my actually getting sick. But when you go to see the doctors, there is nothing there, you're healthy, yeah. like nothing wrong with you. So my yeah. biggest physical symptom was uh, low blood pressure. Uh, you, you, can't, you have no power to stand up. So first, you don't want to wake up in the morning because you don't want to face what's going to happen with you throughout the day. And then your body helps you. Like, okay, you don't want to stand up. Here you go. Low blood pressure. Stay in bed for a week or something. <laughs> you, we'll take care of you. Just stay in bed. Stay. No motivation. I can't work. I can't take care of myself. I can't cook. I don't want to eat. I lose weight or I gain weight. I feel very isolated. Like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to maintain the relationships with people in my life, people who actually care about me. So it's actually, I feel I can't open up. I can't talk about how I feel because I'm afraid of the emotion that they're going to, you know, like yeah, spill right, on other right. people. And I don't want to make other people not happy or uncomfortable well, with what they feel. Now you're dealing with this depression that essentially was kicked off because of the divorce. Did you, did you see how it was affecting others around you as well? Uh, our children have this protective mechanism installed in them. And that mechanism works this way to save your mother, because that's the only yeah. way how they can survive in the world. So what my daughter was doing, she was doing everything to get that crap out of me. <laughs> like she was mom, annoying get it, mom, me. Mom, get it together. Yeah, she was annoying me so badly. And especially those days when I needed to stay in bed, she would do anything for me to stand up and go. Like she would get sick. She would break something. I don't know, like some a glass. I don't know, whatever. So, you know, these pieces get scattered all over the house and I need to stand up and clean the floor. Yeah. I'm depressed. I can't communicate with people. I don't want to talk to people. So my body gives me that and I start having this eczema or rashes or whatever it is. So I, I, I can't really go anywhere around people when I'm with, with skin like that. So, And then my daughter got sick and... Um, she got all that, you know, rash all over her skin. And I was like, okay, now she starts sharing my problems. <laughs> so, yeah, right. And when I saw those physical symptoms, I ran to therapy all over again. So I, just, I was like, no, 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 no. That's, I have to deal with that right now. You will need to go through a lot of trauma work. You'll have to let those things go. You, but the, but the, in order to let those things go, you actually need to look into those things. And that yeah. what scares most people the most because you will need to dig into those traumas. You will need to relive all those memories one more time, bring that pain up, cry about it, forgive it, let it go, and then try to find maybe something positive about it or learn a new behavior. And you will have to educate yourself, like how not to do in this life, how to avoid like, you know, abuse and, you know, toxic people in your life. So... And uh, it's a whole process. It's really hard to do the trauma work on your own. You need to have someone who knows how to deal with trauma. It's very complex. It's, it's not like you, there is no a trauma pill. When you take the pill, you're going to get all better instantly. <laughs> I like That's that. a I lot like of that. work. It's months and maybe years of work. But yeah. another great thing I found out that you can heal from that. Transform yourself into that resilient, strong, happy person, like trauma-free. The biggest thing I've learned about boundaries from that life, that boundaries are not just there, like, like a wall around me, and like I have it all the time. The thing is that I don't know my boundaries in some areas of my life yet because I didn't have any experience with that. Like no one really tried to cross that line. I don't know that that line is there. So the boundaries are not like something solid and you already have them. You learn about them. And that's, again, it's so important to listen to your feelings and to your emotions, how you feel and ask yourself your question, am I happy right now? 
am I comfortable right now? Is this okay? Or does this hurt me? And um, so when something happens, you ask yourself these questions and then you understand, okay, I'm not comfortable. And in order to protect myself from this, I will have to put a boundary. I'll have to, and what is the boundary? You communicate your needs to that person. So you tell them that you are uncomfortable with that. There is nothing wrong with this. If you set up a boundary and that person that you set the boundary up for has an issue, problem, disagreement, you can call it whatever you want. What's the answer to that, Lily? That person has to go. Get the hell out of your life right now. You get him out. Like, that's the door. You get out. Preach, sister. Preach. Let's <laughs> go on preaching. Okay. They got to go. They just got, got to, to go. go. <laughs> just got... And... I'm afraid to lose people. Like, they can be 10 times bad to me, but I still want them in my life. I'm like, please don't go. Like, that's something, that's my childhood trauma is for me. If another person tells me, okay, Lily, I don't like the way you do this. Don't do this to me because I feel uncomfortable with that. I'll kill myself. I'll do that because I don't want that person to be uncomfortable because of me. If I care about this person, I will do everything to make that person comfortable. There is no problem for me to respect that boundary. And if there is a person in your life who actually is not okay with your boundaries, this is a dangerous and toxic person. The only thing that can protect you is your self-love and your boundaries. And unless you have those, you are exposed and vulnerable to emotional abuse. So the only thing that can protect you is the knowledge about boundaries. You have to be in touch with your feelings. You really have to feel when you feel bad, you have to know it. You have to pay attention to it because then you will pay attention to red flags. And you're loving yourself no matter what, putting yourself first, understanding that no one can tell you how to feel. Uh, you know, when two people get together, it's all about being our, the, the highest version of ourselves, becoming the best of you. So you help each other to be the best people you can be. And uh, if you are with someone who is actually bringing the worst in you or who is making you feel w your worst, that's already a toxic person. If you don't have that self-love, if you don't deal with your codependency, if you cannot accept your loneliness, because that is terrible for some people. And the more I talk to people, for most of them, it's like staying lonely, being by yourself. It's horrid. It's, it, but if you don't, if you are not happy to be alone, if you don't know how to entertain yourself and make your life really fulfilling alone, you're going to hold on to those people who can give you nothing, who cannot contribute to, you know, to your life, mm -hmm. who cannot bring the best out of you. It's all about being your absolute best. Mm -hmm. So you have to surround yourself with people who can contribute to that. Could you possibly share to encourage someone who feels that they have just uh, well been un uh, undervalued and unappreciated? Whatever you want to say before you go right now. If you feel undervalued and appreciated, that only means that you still look for validation in the outside world. And believe me, there is nothing there <laughs> that can bring you up. Nothing and no one can make you feel good about you. And that's a dangerous notion only because if that person or that thing steps aside, you're plummeting down. Do not seek the validation and that love outside because the world around us is only the reflection of what we have within. And if within yourself you have love and peace and self-acceptance, you're not going to allow anything less than that into your life and you will see that slowly things will start changing and you will be surrounded by people who are a perfect reflection of how you feel about yourself the only thing you really need is to learn to love yourself for your own heart you have to love yourself first and you don't need to be rich or smart or talented or famous for that you don't need none of that you just need to love yourself for your own heart, for this opportunity to live and get better. Take the challenges with, um, you know, with joy because you have a chance to you become a better person. Take it as fun.
Take every challenge with fun. Okay, what can I do different from the last time? We have negative attitude towards mistakes. We're all driven by perfection. We have to be perfect. There is nothing, there is no such a thing when it comes to life. Our life is about mistakes. We should not repeat same behavior, especially if it doesn't give good results. You just try a different one. If before you were in a relationship where you were giving too much of yourself, now next time you get yourself into relationships and just make that person deserve it. Let them earn that trust because you know, you know what you have to give. There is nothing in the outside world that can make you feel good about yourself. Not even money, though they are important. No. But there are a lot of no. people out there, they have money, they hate themselves. The money yes, doesn't absolutely. buy your self-esteem. Absolutely. <laughs> One thing that I was planning to say, and it's a kind of important, also related to actually self-love, and I really would like people to get that message. That at some point when you are looking for that self-love, you will hit that point, you will understand that there is a higher purpose in your, love, in your life. It has nothing to do with the relationship. It's about you leaving uh, your legacy, doing something for the world to be a better place. And in the end of the day, there is only one thing we really want. We don't want love that is given to us by this particular person. There is love that we need every day in any form. And whatever it is in your prayers, you just mentioned that. That's, that. that's really the only thing we want to do. We want to serve the world. We want to contribute to the world to become a better place. We need miracles because there are things we cannot control in life. Sometimes we just need a miracle. And the only thing that we really want is to be loved every day. And that love can be in any form, even though it's, we, it's not something we expect. Just, just love.